Hello, beautiful people. I am extremely delighted to welcome you to your favorite show, PM Personality Profile. My guest tonight, one of the few women making a bold statement for the contribution of women in the academia. She is currently the first ever female to become vice chancellor at the University of Ghana. And she is currently the youngest vice chancellor in Ghana. Professor Nana Abba Apia Amfo, my guest tonight. Happy to see you. How uh, have you been? I'm fine, Aisha. Good to see you too. Great. And, and uh, Happy New Year. Many, many, many <laughs> happy returns and congratulations for being the first ever, you know, female vice chancellor and the youngest. Must have come with a lot of hard work. Well, thank you very much. Um, it's been quite a journey mm -hmm. and uh, I'm glad I'm where I am currently. Yes, it's a lot of uh, hard work, a lot of uh, focus, but also it's been amazing and exciting uh, having people to guide, mentor, support along the way. It hasn't been as a result of my singular efforts, but the collective effort of uh, my many uh, supporters and uh, mentors, students, faculty, colleagues. Let's talk about the journey so far. And until your appointment, you were vice, um, pro vice, vice chancellor, chancellor right. of academics and students affairs. Right. I mean, you started as a lecturer at yeah, the Department sure. of Linguistics and you became chairperson of the department um, and dean of the School of Languages. That's I mean, it must have been a tough journey. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, uh, it was a step at a time. Uh, as you rightly said, I started out here at the University of Ghana as a lecturer. I rose through the ranks as we say, senior lecturer, associate professor, professor. I became oh, a full professor. Yes, yes, wow. I am, yeah. I became the head of department at the time when I was associate professor mm -hmm. and subsequently became dean of the School of Languages. Mm -hmm. Actually the founding dean wow. when the school was established when the university went fully collegiate in 2014. Okay. And then I became the pro vice chancellor for academic and student affairs, acting okay. vice chancellor and then uh, vice chancellor. It's it's. It's been a step at a time, and when you are engaged in doing things that you love doing, mm -hmm. you don't really see that as a chore, and uh, you move from one step to the other. And before you realize, you can look back and see, oh, wow, this is how the journey has been like. And how it's so it's, it's, it's been... It's been pleasurable, I must say. Okay. Uh, of course, I know that the road hasn't been very straight. Absolutely. Definitely, there's been curves, mm -hmm. there's been mm -hmm. rough patches. Mm -hmm. What would you describe as your biggest challenge climbing the ladder? I think my biggest challenge was the combination of being female and youngish looking. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I say youngish looking <laughs> because uh, I'm relatively young, but not as young as, you know, sometimes people think I am. Yeah. And uh, as a female, you know, there are uh, certain limits that people, society put on us. Mm. Yes, it's okay to get a degree, as a master's degree, even a PhD, mm. you know, be a lecturer and so on. But when you begin to veer into certain leadership spaces, then, you know, some people, sometimes unconsciously, but sometimes also consciously, sometimes subtly, sometimes not so subtly, mm. you know, begin to wonder what is she doing in this space? And yep. when you are also youngish mm -hmm. looking, or yeah. they think you are young and you're not female, supposed to be here. you're not supposed to be here. Where do you think you are headed towards and all of that? So, I'm but bullying. It's some attempted bullying, <laughs> I must say, because I wouldn't let you, okay. uh, I wouldn't let you mm. bully me. So I would say that has been my greatest challenge. But when you are focused, you are confident in yourself, 
you know your job it's uh, very difficult for uh, people to succeed in bullying you in these spaces mm. have you ever been down because of some of these things that i mean sometimes it's even male dominated and uh, you find yourself there young all of them are older and they're like what's she doing what does she think she's doing and they try to frustrate you have you ever gone through that i mean there have been difficult periods certainly there have been difficult periods uh, but overall i don't let these things get to me too much uh, you focus on the work that you are doing uh, you try to be proficient in what you are doing uh, be, be be confident be conversant with your job then people even though they try they don't have any good reason to get at you but if you are not you know if you are sloppy with what you're doing then you provide the opportunity for people to get at you mm, has there ever been time that you wanted to give up like <laughs> i mean why did i even get myself here i mean i don't want to do this again Yes, I, I, I do remember that when I uh, first became Pro Vice Chancellor for Academic and Student Affairs, it was a tough period for me. And I remember one time telling my very good friend that I don't think I, I, I want to be here. I think it, I was better off being Dean. And she said, <laughs> stop talking that, <laughs> that way. So yes, there have been those, those moments as well. And those pressures were coming from where? Students or your colleague teachers or... Oh, well, I mean, I mean, students can't give you that kind, <laughs> can't give me that kind of pressure. But I mean, f more from the environment, the boardroom environment, and the, the as I said, the subtle and not so uh, subtle uh, pressures and challenges that mm. uh, your colleagues try to throw at you. Let's talk about your research areas, mm -hmm. and it's been mainly. Um, linguistics, uh, discipline yeah, of what? Pragmatics? Yes. Well, what exactly is that? And uh, well, what has your research <laughs> found? Pragmatics is the, it's essentially language used in context. Okay. Uh, Aisha, have you ever uh, encountered a situation where you say something and then somebody responds or retorts in a certain way and then you say, I, I didn't mean that. Okay. You know, right. but you said that. Okay. And you didn't mean that so mm -hmm. there's definitely or uh, oftentimes there is a gap between what you say and what you mean more like and saying it right and, and, <laughs> and what 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 you mean is interpreted within particular context, context which is influenced by your beliefs uh, by your environment yeah. by geography mm. by culture and so on and okay. so forth so pragmatics essentially is about language use in particular context mm. and uh, for the past uh, number of years I have been engaged and interested in language use in specific domains so okay. uh, I've, I've been interested in uh, language and health uh, language and gender language language and politics and even language in migratory uh, context okay so uh, one one of the uh, interesting pieces of work that I, I did some time back with other colleagues in the health sciences a psychiatrist and a public health uh, specialist was to look at the language of mental health okay. within our communities mm. and so how do we express issues relating to mental health that provides us an idea of how the people the culture what they think and what they feel about the uh, condition of mental health yeah. and uh, it, it it becomes a tool for us to even educate the community with regard to how we are to support uh, people living with uh, mental illnesses okay quite interesting uh, revelations there but your yeah. modernization and digitization yeah. drive has really caught the attention of many how yeah. has it been so far well so far so good i mean uh we haven't gone as fast as i anticipated for all the uh, obvious reasons mm -hmm. uh, but 
we've done uh, pretty well with the classroom uh, modernization. It's in progress. Uh, last December, uh, I outdoored the the first uh, classroom, which is the K. Buzia uh, Lecture Theatre that has been uh, modernized. Uh, we have. Uh, uh, our projectors, our screens, mm. and the interactive uh, board. Uh, the classroom is such that if you are a lecturer and assuming that you had to attend a, a conference in Germany in the course of the uh, semester, you could be there and That's deliver lecture. your lecture and your students uh, could be in class. And uh, stu students can be outside of the classroom and also uh, tune in. That provides us an opportunity to manage our numbers without necessarily a brick and mortar mm -hmm. uh, situation. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are on course. We we got slowed down a bit with the various uh, strike actions that mm -hmm. we <laughs> encountered last year. Yeah. Of course, the economic situation also uh, made prices escalate and we had to redo almost all of the contracts that we, we signed. So that slowed things down a bit, but we are certainly on course. Uh, for our one student, uh, one laptop uh, project two, we are steadily on that. Uh, last, uh, I think it was October or November, that we had the first disbursement to a group of uh, needy students, I yeah. think about 120 of them. Uh, we are planning another one um, early early this year okay. uh, we are also having our, our, our laboratories uh, uh, modernized and uh, refurbished only uh, last week the the school of social sciences led by the department of uh, political science mm. the outdoor uh, two uh, ict laboratories that okay. have been uh, restocked and uh, refurbished mm -hmm. and so we are on course the various uh, departments and units are also doing their bits within their specific units mm, let me gauge your mood on this um mm. confusion about uh, <laughs> the commonwealth hall and um the matters arising what really necessitated this decision well, it was to allow for us to uh, progressively have an in-out-out policy okay. so that for the university-owned uh, halls, we prioritize uh, our freshers, and that is what is done the, the world over. Okay. In particular reference to Commonwealth Hall and Sabah Hall, uh, we kind of accelerated the uh, policy and it is against the backdrop of the three clashes that we had in the past academic year, each one with the uh, violence uh, progressing more destruction to property and lives. And so we, we decided that we we're going to essentially evacuate uh, these halls, the Commonwealth Hall and the males, the continuing students, mm. the males in Mensa Saba Hall okay. and uh, bring in freshers and graduate students, mm. relocate them uh, to the UGEL hostels and each one of the legally, legally resident uh, students in these halls okay. were given allocations in our UGL okay. uh, halls. So, so, I mean, after level 100, you, yes, after you level 100, then you move out to the in. private uh, hostels, hostels. Okay. and for another group of uh, fresh students and, and we appreciate that these are our most vulnerable students mm. and so we need to prioritize when it comes to university accommodation. And that was only for these two halls? It's a, it's a policy that we are progressively rolling out in all of the university um, managed and um, yes the traditional halls as we say them mm -hmm. as we call them yeah. but in the particular case of commonwealth and the mills in Mensa Saba mm. because of what happened yeah, in the history. past academic year and the need for us to safeguard lives and property mm. we don't want to wait till someone's child dies on this university campus yeah. for management to be blamed mm. for just not doing 
anything. Okay. So we had to accelerate that. Mm. But that's uh, a policy which is affecting all our traditional halls. Okay. Just that we are rolling that out progressively. Progressively. Of course, there's also been issues of accommodation. Recently, freshers have had to struggle with accommodation and what have you. I mean, and, and this has been around for some time. What, what is the university doing about this? Well, Aisha, as uh, I said earlier on, you just mentioned that Fresh is struggling for accommodation. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a university, we need to prioritize our most vulnerable students. And these are our Freshers. Uh, the university has uh, grown in student numbers over the years. Definitely. And uh, it's... it's it's, it's just um, a peculiar situation with our campuses here that we are largely residential. Mm. I mean, all over the world, the universities, you don't get every university student living on uh, campuses, even for those uh, campuses mm. that are uh, partly residential in, in, in nature. Mm. But I believe that this is a problem that we have as a country mm -hmm. uh, because it's, for instance, we don't have a viable transportation system in place yeah. uh, for students to live, let's say, in Adenta, Kaswa, you know, uh, Spinkters Road and commute conveniently, knowing that when I live live home or where I live, uh, wherever I'm staying in a, a hostel at this uh, particular time in the morning, I'll be able to make it for my scheduled lecture at 7.30 or 9.30. Yeah. And so I understand it when almost everyone wants to live on campus. Mm. The university management is uh, making effort to increase the stock of accommodation that we have. There is a hostel ongoing just behind uh, Jean Aka Hostel and we are working uh, extremely hard to ensure that come next academic year that is uh, on board. Maybe uh, from here you can <laughs> go, go and look at it and uh, hopefully that should add about uh, between 900 and 1,000 bed okay. to our stock. And uh, we are also uh, in, in discussions with uh, private uh, developers. Mm -hmm. We've actually leased lands to private developers to okay. develop hostel. Mm -hmm. And uh, UGEL, which is the University of Ghana Enterprises Limited, is also uh, engaging uh, some uh, prospective uh, developers so that we can increase the number of beds mm -hmm. that we have on campus for our students. So I shall promise you that next academic year come there'll be more beds added on okay. and uh, as the the years uh, go by you see more and more beds being added well, on that's really refreshing yeah. to hear because sometimes it's pathetic when you hear some of the freshers um, yeah. talk about accommodation and you see how huge university of ghana is and if you live in castle for instance will be difficult so that will be refreshing to see more of the rooms and beds provided for students but recently also the education minister has been talking about in fact he's worried about courses that are taught in the universities which he thinks do not prepare students for the job market and which he thinks must be scrapped what's your view on this <laughs> <laughs> that's very interesting um, <laughs> The, the comment was made in particular reference to uh, graduate unemployment. Okay. And uh, I think you and I know that it's, it's a complex uh, issue. It's, it's a complex issue and uh, there are various things which various individuals and sectors need to do. As a university, yes, we, we need to improve our programs. Mm. But more importantly, I'm even more concerned about, yes, the content, not so much about the programs, but more about the content, the delivery, and the modes of assessment. Mm. Because apart from those professional programs, 
like medicine, you know, pharmacy, nursing, you know, even law. When you finish from here, you would have to uh, go. Yes, you have course. to do the professional uh, program. Yes. So right here at the university, we essentially just prepare you for the professional program. Right. And that's the case with uh, most of our programs. In particular, I mean, these comments are often said with regard to the liberal arts mm -hmm. uh, generally. Yeah. And uh, what do we seek to do with university education? I think we should not lose sight of that. Ultimately, what university education seeks to do is to build certain general skills in our students and our graduates. Yeah. And uh, these include, you know, critical thinking skills, analytical skills, communication, Correct. you know. And today I add uh, technology to that, that we need to train students who are technologically adept, irrespective of whatever discipline that you are undertaking here, whether it's geography, whether it's pharmacy, whether it's theater arts, mm -hmm. you need these skills yeah. in the 21st century mm -hmm. and i can assure you that that's what my management is leading here okay. uh, for for specific disciplines uh, people sometimes pick up on disciplines as i said in the liberal arts um, like philosophy you know like linguistics and and, and so on but let's ask ourselves when we look at world-class universities have they stopped offering these programs mm. no the society needs a mix of persons to be able to function properly yeah. can you imagine a society just full of scientists yep. there are no humanists mm -hmm. there are no geographers mm -hmm. there are no entertainers yeah. How is it going to how is it going to look like? <laughs> so we need different kinds of people, the people with different uh, background, with these skills that they can fit into different sectors. Uh, because I mean, for most people, they would move from one company to the other and when you move from one company to the other what you need are the transferable skills yes. for each specific company you would need that that context you would need that in-house training to be yeah. able to fit into that mm -hmm. generally also i mean yeah so as a university we are constantly reviewing our programs which we should and as i said the delivery the the content the modes of assessment because these are the things that are able to bring out the potential of critical thinking analytical skills communication uh, skills mm. and let me mention that we cannot leave the responsibility of training people for the job market solely on universities mind you universities are not trade schools yeah the 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 uh, industry should also help offering opportunities for internships while students are in school yeah. so that by the time they are done they have an idea of how it uh, how the world of work Looks works like. but also aisha sometimes i see students I look at their background, I look at their performance, and I say that they are students who are at the university, students who are struggling to come to the university, mm -hmm. who have no business being in the universities. Yes, the but it appears that following from senior high school, there are no viable alternatives. Mm -hmm. So everyone who is going to senior high school think that they, they should end up the at the university mm -hmm. that's something that we need to look at at a society mm -hmm. and provide viable options from our students from the basic level through the secondary level mm -hmm. university is not meant for everyone yep. you know but as i said when they don't see viable options then they think that they should uh, be here and they find it tough being here they don't really appreciate 
the kind of, of, of training that we are trying to offer them here. Yeah. And then also, if you have an economy which is not expanding, mm -hmm. I mean, you will train the students, but how do they get absorbed? Mm, sure, I say that let's go to the companies uh, here in Ghana. Those working there, where were they trained? Yeah. They were trained right in our universities. Mm -hmm. But there isn't room to absorb everyone mm -hmm. who passes through the university. Yeah. So it's a multi-faceted uh, issue and it cannot be that simplistic. I mean, as we speak now, women representation at all levels is below the 30% UN threshold. If you look at parliament, for instance, women representation stands at 14.5%. And I mean, in the district assembly system, it's below 5%. I mean, the situation actually makes it nearly impossible <laughs> for women's contribution to be recognized or women to contribute their quota to whatever is happening in the country. How does this come across to you as a female who is up there? Well, it tells me that there's a lot of work still ahead for us to do. Mm. And uh, it's important that we even have the few women that we have represented in uh, places where uh, policy decisions are made, you know, in the boardrooms, uh, in government, uh, the legislator, the, the legislature, the executive, and uh, even the judiciary. Uh, because, you know, it's important that young women and girls have uh, role models, have people that they look up to. When they see women, even the few men in these spaces, they can look up to them and say, oh, if she is there, why cannot, why can't I be there? Yeah. I can work towards that. And uh, we uh, also have to be deliberate about some of these things. Uh, when I became vice chancellor, I said that I'm going to ensure that whatever um, committees, you know, the university works uh, largely with the committee and board systems. Mm. So if I, whenever I have the opportunity to set up a committee, I was going to ensure that there's uh, like 30% representation. And that was, that was based on the fact that for our senior members, both academic and uh, administrative and professional, mm. it's just about 30%, actually a little under 30%. Percent. Um, I've, I've tried that. I've not always been successful because sometimes the, the team is very technical and uh, it's, it's, it's not possible to do that. Or sometimes you want to make it a representational, so you are requesting for inputs from certain uh, units mm -hmm. and it doesn't happen. But as much as possible, I try to do that, to give opportunity for women to be in these spaces. They then get the opportunity to learn uh, because we don't want to put unprepared women in these spaces. When you do, and I always say that when one woman does not succeed it becomes a reason for other women not to be offered the opportunity, opportunity. even though when men don't succeed and it happens all the time we really find reasons <laughs> why they didn't <laughs> succeed and we give it we give the opportunity to the next man oh, but when it's the woman she didn't succeed because she was a woman mm -hmm. as if there's something you know <laughs> intrinsic <laughs> about being <laughs> a, a woman that yeah. makes you susceptible to a uh, failure mm. so yes we we have to be deliberate in this we have to look out for potential and particularly uh, bring them up and uh, pull them along I remember um, uh, like you say when I used to teach uh -huh. <laughs> uh, the, 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 there's a particular uh, lecturer now in my department that actually pulled her out and uh, asked her whether she had considered doing her national service with us in the department as a teaching assistant. Okay. She hadn't thought about that. Okay. But I, had, I saw the potential in her okay. and I actively encouraged her to do that, 
uh, she went through her master's and PhD and now she's doing uh, fantastic at the department. If I hadn't pulled her out yeah. and uh, encouraged her in that direction, she probably wouldn't have gone along uh, uh, that path. So uh, women need to, young girls, women, they need to be encouraged more. You know, for, for some reason, uh, males are generally more ambitious and you know sometimes when we talk about ambition in a relation to a woman it, it even sounds as if it's it's a bad thing she's yep. too ambitious yep. you know yep. but it's all right yep. for for the man to be ambitious, ambitious. to and aspire you know <laughs> to 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 go all the way yeah. but but not the women so it's important that we deliberately encourage look out for young girls and women and encourage them and prepare them for the opportunities that lie ahead. Professor Nana Abba Apia Amfo, she's my guest tonight and we're having fun on this. I'm learning a lot from her and of course if you listen to her she says we must give women the opportunity. One woman makes mistakes that doesn't mean that the next woman should be prevented from also trying her luck so all of us should be encouraged when i return from this break remember she is the first female vice chancellor of the university of ghana that's a big deal for me personally <laughs> and also she's the youngest vice chancellor in ghana she has a very interesting growing up I means she grew up in kumase but particularly what did she want to become whilst growing up <laughs> She wanted to do linguistics or deal with languages or say it right. Or she wanted to be in the academia. When I returned from this break, she'll be sharing all those memories with us. I mean, what were the fond memories growing up in Kumasi and the terrible moments as well? <laughs> she'll be sharing all of that. Wait for me, I'm coming right back. Welcome back to PM Personality Profile. My guest so Professor Nana Abba Apia Amfo, Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana. Prof, I know you were born in Kumasi. Yes, I was. Is that where you hail from? Uh, no, that's Which not where, <laughs> where I hail from. Uh, I come from uh, Sokori Kufuridia. Okay. Uh, Kufuridia yeah. flowers. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm a flower. I'm a flower. I can see that. <laughs> I'm a flower, yes. Uh, my, my dad came from Nyanabasa in the central region. Okay. Uh, but you know, we are matrilineal, mm -hmm. and so I do come from where my mom came from. Okay. And that's uh, Kufuridia, uh, mm. Sokori. Okay. Yeah. And you were born in Kumasi? Yes, I was born in Kumasi. Uh, I lived there for just about four years, mm. and then we moved to Sekendi, Takradi. We were living in Sekendi, and uh, I schooled in Takradi uh, Services Primary. And uh, from there, we moved on to Takwa, to the mining town of uh, Takwa. Okay. And uh, my, my dad went to work there mm. uh, for some time, and then... Uh, to Kofuridia. So, so. so your mom had to join your dad in Kumasi or how did you end up in Kumasi? Uh, so yeah my mom my my mom both parents uh, were were teachers in Kumasi. Uh, were teachers the I mean my dad had a career path but my mom uh, remained a teacher a high school teacher okay. and uh, worked a bit in the in the office the of the Ghana Education Service okay. and so she she worked as a teacher till she retired so my dad was in Kumasi working then and she joined him from uh, Tamale her, her, her first uh, uh, post after graduating from 
the specialist training college now the University of Education Winneba mm -hmm. was Tamale Secondary School okay. uh, but had to seek transfer to join my dad in Kumasi, Kumasi. Okay. and then my dad left uh, Kumasi he went into sports administration and so he at some point has ha, was the regional sports of a, organizer for the western region mm. and so went to uh secondi takradi and then my mom had to uh, <laughs> uh, follow so it was like that uh, following him around <laughs> wherever he goes so yeah. at what age did you leave kumasi oh about uh, four years because yeah four i started years. i started kindergarten proper in, in Takrade. In Takrade. Yeah. Okay. And you stayed in Takrade till what time? Yes, we were in, so we're living in second D, uh, schooling in Takrade. My mom was teaching at Fijai Secondary School okay. at the time. Mm. And uh, we stayed there till um, I was going to class five because I went to classes five and six in uh, Takwa Goldfields mm -hmm. Schools Complex. Okay, yeah. let's, let's talk about uh, growing up in second day. How would you describe the environment? Oh, it was a nice environment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a nice environment. Uh, all uh, the rich people were in Takrade. Oh, <laughs> my, my dad was then the regional sports organizer. So we, we lived at uh, Ridge in Second D. Okay. Uh, it, it, it was a nice environment. I remember my the, the, the memories I have of there is uh, going to the regional library i i loved to read True. and so i'd go to the library with my brother my he died you know so oh, my my late brother would go that. to 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 the library and uh we will borrow books and then in no time finish reading the books and retain them so at some point i was allowed to borrow a number of uh, <laughs> uh, books at the time <laughs> so that i don't have to uh, quickly uh, go back to retain uh, those those books back. and uh, i mean i do remember jendu park too because mm -hmm. uh, i would go to the the, the stadium uh, with my with my dad um, enjoy the the games the the games uh, hang around with him uh, generally have fun uh, my dad also loved to uh, play tennis and i remember my brother and i we would uh, I have the responsibility of tying up his uh, his shoes, <laughs> his shoes <laughs> and, and so on so yeah it it was it was fun yeah. <laughs> and so do you also did you learn how to play tennis I, I played tennis for a little bit, but I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't sustain you it. Gave up. <laughs> <laughs> didn't right, sustain but, but of it. course, I mean, so those are fun memories of yeah. um, growing up in Sakhardi. Mm. Uh, were there terrible moments as well? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, growing up, of course, uh, from, from, from Takradi, we went to Takwa. I mean, we lived through the difficult period of, of, of the 80s, you know, okay. and uh, my mom uh, being the teacher and the industrious woman that she was, you know, would uh, do other things to support the uh, family uh, income, you know, uh, pastries here and there, uh, ice cream, bread, and we had to help her out, you know, in the selling these things at okay. various uh, points in, in time. We used so to go from house to house, um, asking, do you want some bread? Do you want some pastries? You know, okay. ice cream, uh, <laughs> even abolo, you know. Okay, she used to make that as well. Yes, yeah, she used to make, she used to make those things. Okay, yeah, and sure. so how were you advertising? for your stuff when you had to go from house to house to sell those things yes yeah, so you would you would uh, take these things around and uh, no i i don't remember that i 
used to have to scream, you know, oh, uh, bolo or <laughs> things <laughs> like that. Uh, I, I remember that at some point it was on a school compound that we would go and uh, sell these things and then we would also uh, carry bread to the retailers, let me put it that way, okay. the customers who then uh, sell these on. Uh, hmm. Interesting. So yeah. primary school, um, you said at the university primary school? Yes, yeah, so um, at the, I started nursery uh, in Kumasi. Okay. Uh, my, my mom was uh, teaching at the technology secondary school. Okay. I believe it's now KNUST mm -hmm. secondary school. Yes. And uh, so that's why I, I started the nursery there mm. and then uh, came to properly start school the Goldfields in, in, complex. In, in services primary and then on to Goldfields uh, schools complex so it mm -hmm. was from there that mm -hmm. i went to uh, secondary school at holy child school and holy and child yeah, sure. tell me about the experience in holy child mm. well you know for us during that those periods mm. we spent a long time in secondary school you know Why? five seven years because yes. yeah you did I mean, all a o level and a and level, a level. Yes. okay but o you did it a at two separate exactly schools. yes mm. right uh, so you spend a long time in school at the time that you are starting you are still quite young <laughs> uh, your values are still forming and all of those so uh, for me I had the opportunity to be in uh, Catholic girls' schools. And uh, if you know anything about Catholic girls' schools, okay. uh, there's... Uh, the, the strictness. <laughs> yes, 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 the, the, the strictness. You know, the, the training yeah. that you are offered there, it is to ensure that you get things right, mm -hmm. you get your values right, you are disciplined, uh, you combine uh, studying with all the other things, you know, working, laying your bed, ensuring that your environment is all clean mm -hmm. and all of those. So, I mean, it, it, was, it was good training. Usually when you are going through uh, <laughs> these moments, it's, it's, it's not always uh, nice. You mm -hmm. want to have your own way. You want to do things in your own time, at your own pace. Mm -hmm. But uh, things are very regimented. Mm -hmm. uh, there, but later in life you realize that these uh, they've built in uh, values, you know, and um, systems which really help you mm -hmm. as an individual yeah. to be disciplined, to be able to multitask, and that's one thing that you know as <laughs> women we yeah. have to do. Yeah. Uh, a, a lot because mm -hmm. we have our responsibilities at work, we have our responsibilities at, at home, home, we have our responsibilities within the society, yeah. and uh, you 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 have to manage all of these uh, effectively. And mm -hmm. uh, the 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 period that we spent those days in these schools really prepared us for life ahead without we even knowing definitely and of course you know that is pain now but whilst yeah. at holy child mm. what kind of a student were you oh <laughs> i think all of my life i've been a pretty serious student <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> i've been a pretty serious student i i, I wasn't the trouble someone so. i wasn't i can assure you that i wasn't one of the uh, mm. trouble causes uh -huh. i've uh, generally been uh, uh, law abiding mm -hmm. um, taking my uh, books uh, seriously G generally being consistent okay. yeah being consistent mm. and uh, enjoying the moment uh, making uh, friends and relationships which have really lasted uh, a lifetime but mm. i wasn't one of the naughty ones <laughs> <laughs> so you never got into any trouble both at holy child oh. and uh, archbishop Porta girls 
Oh, I'm sure I did in the context of a group, you know. Okay, what happened? <laughs> in, the, in the context of a group. Uh, maybe maybe the little naughty things that I would do. I actually had uh, um, a mate and uh, a dumb mate that we, she, you know, I was Nana Bapia and then she was Ifwa and okay. uh, those days there were very few of us with the uh, local names and uh -huh. we had we, we see our names and uh, sometimes people will the seniors will mix us relate. up yeah okay. oh we 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 claimed we were cousins <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And then, and then they'll mix us up. So I'll be going and then they'll be referring to me as Ifwada. Of course, I'm not Ifwada Kwapia, so I'm not going to uh, <laughs> uh, mind you and uh -huh. things like, mm. like that. But really, big trouble, no. I mean... Okay, so yeah. I mean, you, you didn't... Um, I didn't run away Follow. from school to uh -huh. no, 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 no. I wasn't that daring. <laughs> then from there you went to the Norwegian University. Well, I came to the University of Ghana, Ghana first. first. Norwegian yes. University of Science and uh, Technology, science and technology yeah. for your MPhil and PhD, yeah. right? And at the University of Ghana, which hall were you? I was in Mensa Saba Hall. Okay. F ninety. Uh -huh. <laughs> How was the experience at the university? Oh, and how it, does it feel that you're back here? <laughs> <laughs> it was a very interesting experience. You know, I mean, for those of us who had been to girls' schools, uh, very uh, protected mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, yeah. all of that, you know, <laughs> from also very protective uh, homes. You come to the university and... Freedom. It's like, you know, <laughs> the whole world. Uh, you, c you, you, you can do whatever you wanted at whatever time. I mean, there's no light off. I mean, the <laughs> campus at 11 p.m. is as alive, <laughs> you know, as, 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 five, as mm -hmm. 5 p.m. Uh, I was in a mixed hall, okay. <laughs> you know. So it, it, it was really an, an interesting uh, experience. I built uh, friendships and relationships here which have also uh, lasted uh, a lifetime. Okay. Uh, on campus, I was uh, very, I was very active. I was very active in the uh, University Christian uh, Fellowship. Mm -hmm. uh, was also in uh, Ligon Pentecostal uh, Union. I was uh, pretty known on campus. Oh, um, I'm sure I would have gone into student politics if I weren't a year abroad student. <laughs> <laughs> Is that where you met uh, Ms. Amfo? Uh, well, I met him on Legon, <laughs> on Legon campus, but he, he wasn't, wasn't a student. student. Okay, yeah, how did that he happen? <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, he went to uh, KNUST. Okay. Uh, I met him. Um, it just happened that a number of my friends on campus were also his friends. Okay. Right? <laughs> yes. So okay. I first met him through a very good friend of mine, a female friend of mine. Uh -huh. But then I would go to this room and find him there and here <laughs> and find him there. <laughs> well, he wasn't a he student. Well, he wasn't. Hey. <laughs> we should ask him what he was looking for. <laughs> Maybe he was looking for you. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, we, we met here and, uh, yeah, the story started uh -huh. <laughs> started from here. But uh, he was, as, as we say, we used to say in those days, he was externe, not in <laughs> <laughs> and one thing led to another. Yeah. <laughs> Quite yeah, interesting. Yeah, but I'm yeah. sure he's been very supportive oh, throughout the journey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, extremely. I mean, I, I, I don't know how I would have made it uh, thus far without his, uh, his, his support. He's mm. been very mm -hmm. supportive. And uh, every woman deserves uh, <laughs> such a kind of a man. man. Mm. Wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Big ups to him. <laughs> right. So, which among your kids is following your steps? Um, 
How many of I, them? Well, there are three of three. them. Three. There are three of How them. How many boys? Yeah, How many a son girls? and two daughters. Two girls. Okay. Yeah, a son and two daughters. Mm. Um, well, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure for them. I mean, they are all doing uh, very well and. Uh, Perhaps I mean the, the the last my last daughter has started talking about interest in research and all of that, but okay. uh, we'll see how it goes. What I mean, no they, they are free to uh, <laughs> explore, you know, their 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 interest and their likes no and uh, yeah, all. no pressure. But so growing we'll up, what did you want to become? <laughs> Interesting. I mean, uh, different things at at, at, at different, different time, points at in different time. Po points <laughs> in, in time. I mean, you know the the doctor phase, the uh -huh. <laughs> the lawyer phase, yes. you know, and 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 all of that. So, you know, different things at different times, mm. but. Um, so Once at some I point came, you wanted to be a doctor. Oh yes, I'm sure we've all had that. You know, <laughs> and especially I wanted generation. to be a lawyer. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and know. what did mom um, want you to become? Oh, my parents wanted me to become whatever I wanted to. Okay. Uh, my parents were extremely supportive. Mm. I mean, my dad, fantastic. You know, just do what you want to do so long as it's not illegal <laughs> uh -huh. okay. so long as so they so never no they gave you never any pressure they to become never mm. gave any pressure to pursue a particular line of of, of study it was uh, entirely uh, up to up to you uh, so what you wanted what you to want do to i mean the they, they very much, they were both educationists, so very much interested mm -hmm. in uh, education. Okay. And uh, they also understood that one needed to pursue their interest. Yes. Because when you are doing something that you like, uh, you, you, you do it, um, just, you just do it. Yeah. Uh, not, not thinking so much about the immediate results yeah. and uh, because of the effort you put into you are eventually uh, rewarded for that mm -hmm. so absolutely no pressures from them but very supportive okay so i'm sure you'll feel my nyara by any four when you are right yeah so you're they're right. They're so proud of their mother for yeah. all the yeah. achievement but i see you're very busy mm -hmm. what time do you make for family <laughs> uh, well, I, I I do make time for me. the thing about me is that I I actually started my family before I started my career. Okay, uh, I had Yofi uh, before I started my masters. So okay. I had him, and I started my masters four months after okay. that in Norway. So I I've grown up with them <laughs> i mean okay. in terms of my career they they, they were there before That's my career beautiful. so i have okay. learned to leave them <laughs> yeah. into the things that i i, I do mm. so that's 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 how it's been like i remember that uh, there was a period that i was uh, president of linguistics association of ghana mm -hmm. and we had annual conferences uh, in different uh, venues, uh, different cities, different mm. towns, mm. and uh, I would go along with them uh, for the <laughs> conferences, mm -hmm. uh, so that they they get to be with their mom, uh, even while their mom <laughs> is working, and they loved it. They uh -huh. they looked forward to another uh, conference. Uh, another conference. <laughs> and, <laughs> and when the conference uh, was in Accra, they weren't happy, happy about <laughs> it. They Did weren't happy see? about ab about about that. So, okay. yes, I've I've learned to work around and <laughs> alongside with, with them. them so yeah i do make time for mm. i do make time mm. for for family and yeah. how i mean what do you do to relax i mean <laughs> your your own self <laughs> and you, you talked about how you've had to <laughs> juggle between being young 
<laughs> and being in <laughs> academia and doing all the hard work, but you still have to look good. <laughs> what do you do to relax? Uh, what do I do to relax? Well, I like to listen to music. I yeah. like to dance mm -hmm. when I have the opportunity okay. uh, to. Uh, I'm also an avid walker. <laughs> yeah. okay. I walk and I exercise. So okay. yeah. Do I get the like opportunity to exercise with you? Yes, At least. yes. <laughs> when, when I grew up, I went to be a professor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> and I must say, we admire you a lot. Keep up the good work and keep contributing to your quota to making Ghana a better place. Viewers, thank you so much for watching. Same time next week, I'll be bringing you another exciting edition of PM Personality Profile. My name is Aisha Brian. Do enjoy the rest of our programs, but remember, that I'm going to be walking and exercising with Professor Nanaba Apia. Thank <laughs> you.